we see with the eyes, but we see with the brain as well. And seeing with the brain is often called imagination. Imagination! And we are familiar with the landscapes of our own imagination, our inscapes. We've lived with them all our lives. The concept of vision weaves its way through fact and fiction, one influencing and inspiring the other in a constant tandem throughout history. For example, in Greek mythology, as punishment, the gods would blind those who offended them, as in the case of Oedipus, whose own short-sightedness led to his literal blindness. The overlying flaw in Oedipus is his own lack of sight, but the theme influenced famous psychologist Sigmund Freud to construct the Oedipus complex. This is a prime example of vision interconnecting with thought processes, from the doctrine of fiction to the science of psychology. Both mind's vision and optical vision are studied in the field of psychology, with existing conditions like psychosis and schizophrenia. Yet how do visual ailments change a person's mental perception? One way to examine this is through the artistic expression of famous artists who have had optical disorders. Enter Claude Monet, born November 14, 1840 in Paris. His early impressionist paintings showcase his ability to light up a canvas with an explosion of colors such as Hardin à Giverne or the Cliff Walk at Portville. Yet as Monet grew older, he was diagnosed with cataracts, which is thought to have had a large influence on his painting toward the end of his life. Here's a slightly later painting of his called Water Lilies and Japanese Bridge. Now here's a computer altered image of what researchers believe Monet physically saw. Directly after receiving eye surgery, Monet's palette changed even more drastically. Here's a painting of his titled The Japanese Footbridge. As you can see, he used a far darker color scheme than his earlier works. Other artists also created works of art that showed signs of optical ailments. Edgar Degas was one such artist. He suffered a retinal disease that affected him for the last 50 years of his career and may have contributed to his unique palette choice. Here's a painting by Degas titled Woman Drying Her Hair. And here's a computer simulated image of what scientists believe Degas was actually seeing. These artists showcase how intertwined their physical vision is with their mind's eye representations as they take in the world and demonstrate their imaginative vision with their paintings. The mind's eye and physical eyesight both contributed to these great artists' works, and the concept of vision prevails even into more modern versions of art, such as Michaeli Culkin's character in The Sixth Sense. I see that. It remains a consistent theme to this day and captivates artists of all types. Yet you don't need to be a famous artist to see how vision affects you. What you can see can inspire all, sate, disgust, arouse, and spark any mental response imaginable. Your eyesight and mind's eye work together to shape your external and internal worlds. As dangerous as it is to tell a story from a single's perspective, as author Chimamanda Adichie has mentioned, it is equally as threatening to see the world and everything in it from one. So remember to take the time to close your eyes and reopen them with a different view on something. Go make the familiar unfamiliar, and don't forget that your mind's eye plays a large role in shaping your reality.